never to talk to strangers. Uh, now I do that for a living. <laughs> I, I was told uh, as a young child that if, if someone comes to the door and rings your doorbell and you don't know who they are, definitely should not open it. So I can remember several times uh, as kids, uh, doorbell rings. Not only did we not open it, we used to run uh, to the back of the house, to the room furthest away, and just hide under the bed until <laughs> that person left. Uh, friends, the door to our homes is very important. Uh, who we let in really impacts the spirit of the house. And so uh, we also have a house that's not uh, under rain right now, but a house that's under grace today. This one. This one. You know, uh, when I went back home, and uh, Emma from New York uh, and I were talking about my former house in New York, I went back, I was four years old when I left. And I went back when I was 25 years old, and I knocked on the door. And apparently that lady did not have the same instructions I received as a child because <laughs> she let me right in. Uh, and she was showing me all these rooms and going upstairs and on the deck and I was thinking, I don't, I don't remember, I don't remember any of this. I mean, I was four years old, I should remember something. And she said, oh, I forgot. Your house actually burned down to the ground. <gasps> oh. Oh. <laughs> However, <laughs> that wasn't the reason why I didn't recognize the house. Uh, it was the lady who I didn't recognize. It was the home I did not recognize. Friends, Zacchaeus invited Jesus into his house, and his life changed. Who is in our house? You can kind of tell. I, when I go into a Korean household, I know it's Korean. It smells like kimchi. <laughs> <laughs> when, when I go into uh, a Mexican household, I know it's a Mexican household. Uh, they've got tortillas. You know, it's great. Uh, they also have a nice, beautiful Our Lady Guadalupe image right smack as soon as you enter in. <laughs> Welcome to my Mexican household. <laughs> but when they enter into your house, what will they see? Friends, I'm not necessarily talking about your actual home home, though you do should have crucifixes and statues and Our Lady Guadalupe <coughs> up. That's a good thing. It, it changes the uh, spirit of the house. I'm talking about the house in you. When people meet you and I, who, what kind of house will they be a part of? A spirit of joy? A spirit of forgiveness? A spirit of peace and unity? Perhaps some of us have now tasted that over these three days because we've open the door of our hearts wide to Jesus Christ, and He's come in, and we've invited that. Perhaps maybe a little bit we've opened the door, but Jesus needs just a little bit to, to come in, because He's pure spirit, and He can come into wherever crevice of our hearts that we let Him. So how do we open the door of our heart? You just did. You learned it. That's what we've been practicing for the last three days. You've had to come out of yourself a little this, these past three days. You've had to talk to people maybe that you're not used to talking. You've had to pray in a way that you're not used to. You've had to read certain things and hear certain things that, that really have maybe opened up the door of your heart. But friends, we beat the Christmas rush and go to Mass on Sunday. Huh? <laughs> that we do this every single seven days. Why? Because... For, for seven days, we don't get that spirit of joy. We don't encounter spirit of faith and community. We're not immersed in a spirit of faith. We're immersed in a spirit of greed. 
and selfishness. We're, we're immersed in a world that's idolatrous, that is turned away from God. Why do I need to celebrate Mass every day? Because if I don't come in touch with Jesus, if Jesus, if I don't invite Jesus in an intentional way into my house, this one, then I have nothing to say. Or I have nothing to give to the world. Your eyes, your soul, your actions, who you, what you do, that, that is all what comes in. The eyes of your soul. The eyes are the eyes of your soul. That's the door of your soul. So watch out what you, what you see. Uh, the feet, the feet, the, the, they're, they're kind of the, the way of your soul. So watch out where you go. You know, the, the mouth, that's the, that's the mouthpiece of your soul. So watch out what comes out. But friends, if, if every day we're intentional about inviting Jesus in, then, then whatever and wherever we are, Christ exudes. Christ just comes out. Zacchaeus was a short man. In other words, he was totally on the fringe of society. In other words, they knew that he was a sinner because they, they knew he was stealing their money. He bought Jericho from Rome for a million. And they made another million. He made two million a year. One for Rome and one for himself. And everybody knew it. Hmm. And so they hated his guts. But friends, Jesus came for people like that. For people that didn't feel worthy. People who, was, who were short in stature. The Thessalonians thought the time was past. It's not past. And maybe you're thinking, geez, I didn't get anything out of this retreat. I, I, didn't, I didn't feel any joy. I didn't feel, I didn't, time's not past, friends. The encounter continues. It's every time you're intentional about your prayer. Every time you come to scripture. Every time you intentionally come into a community like this or your own. Every time you intentionally decide to do something moral and good and avoid evil. Every time you do that, friends, that's an opening of the door. And you and today maybe you open it a little and and tomorrow you open it a little more and and the next day you and so there's a habit of just opening the door to Jesus. Don't let and confuse your soul. Jesus should not be the stranger at your door. Jesus should be the one who's constantly invited. And just like there's an individual house in here, there's a house in here that you're a part of, the community of faith of young adults in wherever you are, and friends, there's a house called the United States of America. What kind of house do we want to have? What, what kind of spirit do we want to have in our house? Let's invite Jesus the spirit of joy, the one who reaches out to the poor, the immigrant, to the unborn, to the ostracized. Let's, let's invite that Jesus in November. Friends, don't wait for other people. The, the next leader in, in our country, that's, that's someone in our house that's going to protect people like the elderly, the incarcerated. That's going to protect and, and fight for those people. Those are people of our house. We live in a common home. What we do in here, what we do in here, and what we do here should all be consistent. Let's invite Christ into all of our life, our political life, our religious life our social life, our private life, every part of our life. Open that door. There's multiple doors we've got to open, friends. And some doors are easier to be opened together. That's why we come here, that Christ may encounter us, and we might encounter Christ today 